Let's take a look at the new Apple Invites service. So Apple has a new app and service called Apple Invites. It's basically a way to invite people to an event and then you can get RSVPs from them and update them about the event. So it's actually available in two ways. One is as an iPhone app. The other is as part of the iCloud.com website. So I'll start by showing you on the iPhone, but I'll also show you how you can do it on your Mac using iCloud.com. The most important thing you need to know is in order to create an event, you need to be using iCloud Plus. In other words, you need to have a subscription to iCloud. It could just be the 99 cent a month subscription to get a little more drive space. Anything that qualifies you for having iCloud Plus will allow you to create events. But to accept an invitation on an RSVP, you don't need iCloud Plus. As a matter of fact, you don't need to be using iCloud or an Apple product at all. So you'll find Apple invites in the App Store. So you have to go to the App Store, you have to search for it, and then get it. Once you launch it, the first time, you're gonna get a little welcome screen, and then you get a screen like this, allowing you to create an event. When you go to create an event, you first get to add a background, so you get to choose from various different backgrounds that are shown here, or some basic colors, or add a photo, or just take a photo right now. So let's go and add something just like this, and there's the background. Then you get to add an event title, so let's call this one birthday party. And you can choose from one of four different fonts here. It tries to keep things simple so you can just quickly create an event. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. And then you can choose a date and time. So let's just pick a date here in the future. Let's choose the end of the month and Let's choose a time, let's say starting at eight o'clock. And you can include an end time as well by checking that off. You can also set it to just be an all day event. So we'll just use this. And now we've got the date there. Then you could choose a location. So you could type the name of a business nearby or just an address. So I'll choose a nearby pub and then done. So now I've got those things right there. It has my name here taken from my Apple ID. I could tap here and add a description if I want. I can type something else for my name if I want, like if I have a nickname or whatever. And then I can also do a few other things at this point, or I can come back and do it later. One is I can create a shared photo album. So this of course would only work with other people using iCloud Photos, but I would be able to take photos and have them appear in the shared album. And so would other people who I've invited here. So it's just a fun way to have people take photos at the party and then have them all instantly shared with everyone else who is at the party. You can also do the same thing with the playlist using Apple Music. So anybody else that's using Apple Music could add songs to this playlist. So people could add a bunch of their favorite songs and then you could just have that playlist on at the party. These are kind of neat bells and whistles, but you don't have to use them if you don't want them. So you can scroll through all this information and change it. Then you can go to preview here and you can see a preview of what this will look like when people receive the invitation. Then you could tap next and now here's where you invite people. So you can invite them either with a public link or individually. So with the public link, you would just have a link and you could post it anywhere and anybody with that link could RSVP. You can decide whether or not you want to approve those guests. So somebody RSVPing doesn't necessarily mean they're added to the list. You would then have to approve each person. If you turn this off, anybody can RSVP. So great for a kind of public event where you just want to be able to invite anybody. And you could also invite individuals. So you could tap here and it will use your contacts. So now for instance, I can invite this person here and I can send them an invite by message or by email or I could just share the link here and then I could actually copy it here. So if I have some other way, some other app I use to message them, I could copy the link and send them that link. At any time I can go back to the invites app, I can see my invites here, the ones I'm hosting and the ones I've accepted RSVPs to. And I can go back in, I can tap the three dots button here and edit. I can go to event settings. So I can add additional guests. 
And there's some interesting settings here. There's additional guests. So you can allow people plus ones, for instance. You can change whether or not you're approving guests for the public link if you've done that. And there are a bunch of other things that you can do here. If you just want to invite more people, you can see here there's invite guests and you go back to the screen and you can add more. If you want to send everybody who was RSVP'd a note, you can. You can just type a note here and send it out to them. You could also add this event to your own calendar. This works, of course, if you're hosting the party or if you've just accepted RSVP. You tap here and it's going to add to your calendar. But what if you're not using your iPhone for this? What if you want to do it on your Mac or even your iPad? Well, you can. You just need to go to the web apps at iCloud.com. You log in with your Apple ID. And now one of the apps that you have here is Invites. And you have all the same functionality here. So here you could see the event that I created. I could create a new event here. And you could see everything is here just like before. I can choose an image. I could create the name, the time, the address. I can write a description right here, send it out, and invite people. It all works basically the same just in a web browser. And you can switch back and forth. You can create it here at iCloud.com and then later manage invites on your iPhone or vice versa. So let's go back here to the event I created, for instance, and you can see I can manage guests here. And here's the public link for this, but I could also invite individuals. Let's give that a try. I'm gonna invite with a sample email address that doesn't even have an iCloud account. I'm gonna press return and it's gonna add it there. And here is the link. So I could copy this link here and now I could send it to them any way I want. I could always go back here to get the link. It's a unique link for this person. So it knows who it is I've invited and to tie it back to this particular guest in my event. So to even demonstrate further how it will work for a non-iCloud user, I'm going to go outside of Safari, go into Firefox here. And this is what happens when I click on that link in a message or an email. It takes me to this page here, and it's going to ask me to verify my email. So the idea here is you type the email address, the one you got the invite to, so it can verify that it's you. And then when I do that, it's going to send a code to that email address. So it's kind of like a double opt-in, making sure somebody can't forward that link on or post it somewhere publicly, and then all sorts of people can invite themselves to the party. Of course, if you're using an iCloud email address, you don't have to do this. It has them log in and it knows who they are. So here's that verification code. I'm going to copy it and paste it in. And now you can see it takes me to the special iCloud.com invites page. It looks like I'm logged into iCloud.com, but I'm not. If I click here, you can see all I can do is exit. And here I've got the RSVP control. So I can say, yes, I'm going. And I can respond. I can even add a message if I want and then submit. So now if I go back to the page here where I'm host or to the app on the iPhone, if I go to manage guests, you can see it shows that this person is going. That's basically how it works. You need to have iCloud Plus to create an event, but to accept an RSVP, you don't need anything except a regular email address to be able to respond. So some of you may be wondering, why is Apple coming out with a service like this? Well, it used to be that there was one company that dominated this space, but then Facebook came in and kind of took over. But now a lot of people don't like to use Facebook. And sometimes those are exactly the kinds of people you want at your party. So an Apple invite service that doesn't require you to have an Apple account to RSVP could actually be a space where Apple could take over or at the very least, just add a little extra value to getting an iCloud subscription. At the very least, it's a good alternative now for having a Facebook account and having everybody else who's invited also have a Facebook account and also not having to sign up for a completely different service which may charge you or show you lots of ads. So it's worth taking a look at for your next big event. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.